cervical vertebrae. Typical cervical vertebra. So here we are. Let's take a look together at features that typical cervical vertebra will offer to us. As stated earlier, in the first part where we describe the features of the typical vertebra, regardless which group it belongs to, now we can find out that cervical vertebra will have those same features as well. Here is the body. Here is the transverse process. Here is the transverse process on the opposite side. Paired lamina. Here is the pedicle. Here is a pedicle on the opposite side. Large opening vertebral foramen. Here is the spinous process. So let's find out what are the features that cervical vertebrae will offer that were not seen so far in the previous section. There are several features that will make possible to immediately identify the cervical vertebra. Let's take a look at its most obvious features. For example, when we looked earlier at the body of the thoracic vertebra that we used as the model for typical vertebra, we were able to see that both upper as well as lower surface of the vertebral body was quite flat. So the entire body was shaped more like a rectangle. As opposed to thoracic vertebrae with their rectangular bodies, cervical vertebrae would have upper surface of the vertebral bodies shaped as a concave and the concavity could be observed going side to side. Inferior aspect of the same vertebra in its body will show that there is also a bit of concavity pointing downward and in this case concavity runs front to back. That already makes a steep difference between the bodies of cervical compared to body of typical thoracic vertebra. On the upper surface of cervical vertebral body we're seeing two quite prominent spikes that are pointing sideways. They are known as the uncinate processes. Here is the uncinate process on the opposite side. The transverse process of a cervical vertebra is also much different compared to typical vertebra. First of all, one can see right away that there are two new openings that cervical vertebrae would only have as a group. These openings are known as the transverse process foramina. The transverse process itself appears to be directed more in anterior and lateral direction as opposed to position and orientation of the transverse process of the thoracic vertebrae that would point posteriorly and laterally. On the top of that directional difference, you can also see that transverse process of the cervical vertebra is somewhat shaped like a gutter. At its most distal ends, one can identify the anterior tubercle of the transverse process and the posterior tubercle of the transverse process as well. This is the pedicle. This is the lamina. This is the transverse process with two tubercules, the anterior tubercule and the posterior tubercule. Another interesting feature that cervical vertebrae would have is their relatively short and split end spinous process. In anatomical terminology, this feature is described as the bifid spinous process. Those two could be identified as tubercles of the spinous process. Another interesting and important feature of cervical vertebrae is what is the shape and what is the orientation of their superior articular processes and inferior articular processes. As we can see them here, this is the superior articular process and this is the inferior articular process of cervical vertebra. Because cervical vertebrae are generally smaller, they need to have a little extra bone 
added between their superior and inferior articular processes. So this becomes a new feature that cervical vertebrae would have and it is known as the articular column. Term column in this case means like a little beam, a support pillar.